I have been teaching on the subject, have you received the Holy Spirit since you believe? That is found in Acts chapter 19, verse 2. And throughout my entire Christian life, I knew that somewhere along the line when a person believes, he is not automatically a Christian. Something has to take place. But I just couldn't put my finger on it. It seemed that as if God was keeping it from me. Whenever people would start to argue my case of how do you know that you're going to heaven? How come so many people who believe after a while fall away? If you believe in one saved, always saved. These things would constantly bombard my mind. But I knew in my heart that true, once a person is truly born again, then he has become the possession of the Heavenly Father. Then he has been sealed unto the day of redemption. And neither death, nor life, nor principality will be ever able to separate us from God. These things I knew in my spirit. But how to explain them, I for some reason just couldn't quite bring it forth. But the Holy Spirit has brought incredible revelations to my attention. And I want you to pay close attention as I bring forth these messages have you received the Holy Spirit since you believed? Today I want to continue on this uh, subject. But before I get into this message today, I will ask the Lord to bless us. Heavenly Father, I come before you in Jesus' name. And I pray, O oh God, that your Holy Spirit will open the hearts of them that are listening. Father, I pray for them who are not sure of themselves that through reading thy word, through meditating on thy word, they can come to have a clear revelation of you, O oh God. I thank you for the privilege of teaching thy word. I ask, O oh God, that you will keep me from error. Help me to bring forth this message in a clear manner. In Jesus' name, amen. Once again, I want to remind the listeners that I don't want to complicate Christianity, the way of salvation. But I want to bring forth the message from Jeremiah chapter 17. The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? I, the Lord, search the heart. I try the reins, even to give every man according to his ways and according to the fruit of his doings. So the very simple fact is this. Once you know about the way of salvation, once you have heard about the, pre the teachings of the cross of Jesus Christ, then it will be the, according to the condition of your heart. When, if God will save you or not. For he tries your reins. He tries your heart. For the Bible teaches us very clearly in Psalm chapter 26 verse 2. The psalmist said to God, Examine me, O Lord, and prove me. Try my reins and try my heart. Very interesting scripture. And I would advise everyone who has turned to God for salvation to challenge God to try his reign and try his heart. For this is what the psalmist did. He wasn't at all satisfied with the way things were going. He asked God to prove him and God surely did. And this is what every person has to do. Once you turn to Jesus, tell him to try your heart and your reins. See if you really belong to him. For many people have this mediocre Christianity. They say they believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, but so for some reasons, the fruit of their doings deny the fact that they belong to God. But to continue in this message, I want to explain to you that God has very reasonable ways of letting us know whether we belong to God or not. 
For throughout scriptures there are warning signs telling us whether we are His. The Bible teaches us in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 13. For by one Spirit are we all baptized into one body, whether we be Jews or Greeks, whether we be bond or free, and have all been made to drink into one Spirit. So when a person becomes born again, he receives the Spirit of God. The Bible teaches us very clearly that we have been baptized into the body of Christ. In other words, we have received the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And once a person has received the, ha the baptism of the Holy Spirit, he then receives the manifestation that he has the Holy Spirit. You will know when you become born again. For in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 7, But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man. Every person who has been born again will receive the manifestation of the Holy Spirit. This means you will know. Manifestation means you will know that something has happened to you. Once a person is born again, you will see many scriptures that speak to your heart. You will begin to understand the language of the Bible. This is why I often question, have you been taught how to be a Christian or are you one? For many concerned pastors and teachers, once a person believes, will try to teach him on how to be a Christian. You don't teach a person how to be a Christian. Either he is one or he isn't one. You can teach him how to live as a Christian, but don't confuse the living the Christian life with being a Christian. There is a best difference. The heart has to be changed. This is why I always wondered about the scripture found in 2 Timothy chapter 3, 3, verse 12. Yea, all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. Many people try to live godly. The place I grew up in, we had people who lived so-called godly lives. But for some reason, they didn't su suffer any persecution. But the moment I started to live a godly life and proclaimed Jesus at the same time, persecution begins. I want to challenge you with this. If you feel that you're a Christian and you don't su suffer persecution, then maybe you don't know Jesus, because it tells us those that live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. You will be ridiculed and you will be put aside by your friends. It tells us in 1 John chapter 3, he that keeps his commandments dwelleth in him and he in him. And hereby we know that he abides in us by the Spirit which He has given us. We know by the Spirit that has been placed there. And we also know He that has the Spirit will keep the commandments of God. For it very clearly tells us, By their fruits you shall know them. And also it also tells us, My sheep hear my voice, and they follow me. In 1 John chapter 4, verse 13, there is another scripture. Hereby know we that we dwell in him and he in us, because he has given us of his spirit. Very interesting scriptures that speak to the heart of a person. This is why I constantly warn people, do you know that you belong to the Lord Jesus Christ? Are you sure of your salvation? Is God speaking to you? Do you feel his presence? Don't be satisfied with a me mediocre Christianity. If the Holy Spirit does not 
prove himself to you by filling you with his presence, then maybe you're not born again. And once you have that Holy Spirit, then you are qualified to test the spirits. For it tells us in 1 John chapter 4, verse 1, Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits, whether they are of God, because many false prophets are gone out into the world. Very interesting. Once a person is born again, the spirit of the living God dwells within him, then he is qualified to test the spirits. Sometimes we wonder why a believer that has walked with us for a while falls into some uh, cult and starts teaching something totally different. It is very interest. It is very easy to understand. Once you see these scriptures, they don't really know God. Yes, they talk the talk. They walk the walk for a while. But after a while, somebody comes along and he takes a detour away from the kingdom of God. And that also goes when it comes to the things of this world. I want to talk to those believers who are listening to my voice today who are caught up in religion. You have been brought up with a religion that has ingrained your very being. It is hard for you to set this religion aside and to seek after Christ. But in your heart, you want to please God. Give God a chance. Turn to the Word of God. Be pliable. Allow Him to speak to you. For the Bible is very clear on this subject. He that draws nigh to me, I will draw nigh unto him. And he also says, He that comes to me, I will in no wise cast out. So if you are caught up in religion today, but you are fearful, am I making the right decision when I turn to this Jesus? Yes, you are. If you will give the word of God a chance to speak to your heart, you can know that you belong to God, regardless what teaching you have been brought up with. It tells us in 1 John chapter 5, verse 12, He that has the Son has life. He that has not the Son of God has not life. These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God, that you may know that you have eternal life, and that you believe that you may believe on the name of the Son of God. So the Apostle John is encouraging us. Don't let some religion twist you. Believe it, turn to Jesus and accept it. And the Lord God will fill your heart with his love. I know that for a fact. When I started out, I was confused myself because I have been brought up in a very religious atmosphere. The religion that I was brought up with was totally ingrained within my soul, spirit, and my body. And But once Jesus opened my eyes to the truth, I did not question the word of God. I knew for a fact that the Bible was the truth. And I started to study up on the Word of God. I knew within my heart that somehow the religion I was in was lacking because the proof was all around. But for some reason it was so ingrained in me that I thought it was the people, not the religious religion's fault. But the truth is, it is the religion's fault. Religion tells a person if he does this or that, he will be good enough in the end and God will deem him saved if he only keeps on doing good. This is a lie. This is a deception. The Bible teaches us very clearly that the heart is deceitful and desperately wicked and no person can live good enough 
to please God. You need to turn to Jesus for salvation. It is only the blood of Jesus Christ that cleanses your soul from sin. It is the sacrifice that Jesus did on the cross for us. It is the only sacrifice that can take care of the sin problem. So don't be fooled by religion. Don't be fooled by some cult. Turn to the word of God. Accept the fact that it's written there. Accept the testimony of Jesus. It is the blood of Jesus that saves you. And once you turn to that, out of a heart that repents, God will baptize you with His Holy Spirit and He will place you from the powers of darkness into the kingdom of His dear Son. You will then become his purchased possession, seated in heavenly places, far out of the reaches and clutches of Satan. The Lord will open your heart to that awesome, beautiful truth and make you his treasure and a blessing to many. Amen. When I teach on the subject of salvation, I try to make myself very clear that your salvation depends on the condition of your heart. Regardless how educated you are or regardless how you understand the way of salvation, God looks at the condition of your heart and He decides whether to save you or not. And that even comes before you even know God. God sees the condition of your heart. He knows whether you are searching and he will bring you to the light. I want to give you an example of two people found in the Bible, two disciples of Christ. One is Judas Iscariot and one is Simon Peter, both of them apostles. They both healed the sick. They both cast out devils. They both saw the miracles of the Lord Jesus Christ. When you study their lives, Simon Peter was very zealous for God. He overreacted in a lot of ways and a lot of times. But when you study the life of Judas Iscariot, you see a selfish streak in his heart. And we have to remember that both Judas Iscariot and Simon Peter claimed they loved the Lord Jesus Christ. They walked with him for three years. They had become very intimate with the Lord Jesus Christ. But I want to bring your attention how the Lord Jesus Christ dealt with them when there came the time of testing. We know what happened to Judas Iscariot. The Lord Jesus Christ told him, whatever you want to do, go do it quickly. And we know the end results of the, what Judas Iscariot did. He went and hung himself. Now let's look at what Simon Peter did. The Lord Jesus Christ told him, you're going to deny me three times. And that is very similar to what Judas did, if it is not the same thing. But there was a difference in the intent of the heart of those two people. And in Luke chapter 22, verse 31, the Lord reveals a very, very uh, interesting uh, revelation. He tells us, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan has desired to have you that he may sift you as wheat. But I have prayed for thee that thy faith fail not. And when thou art converted, strengthen thy brethren. What a difference between Simon Peter and Judas Iscariot. The Lord Jesus Christ told Simon Peter, Satan is going to sift you like wheat. He is going to try you. But don't worry, Simon. I have prayed for you that thy faith will not fail. So I will ask everyone a question here. When your time of testing will come, 
Will the Lord Jesus pray for you as he is our intercessor sitting at the right hand of the Lord God? Or will he just allow you to do whatever you choose? The, the choice is up to you before the time of testing comes. You have to draw nigh unto God so that he will draw nigh unto you so that when your time of testing will come, the Lord Jesus Christ, our advocate, will pray for you and you will not fall or fail. This is the difference between Judas Iscariot and Simon Peter. The Lord Jesus prayed for Simon Peter and he protected him. And when we are being tested, when we are tried, the difference is, will Jesus pray for us? You have the choice whether he will or not. He knows the condition of your heart. He knows whether you want to pass the test. And once you're serious with him, regardless what test comes against you, he will pray for you and you will be able to go through the trial, test, or tribulation with an assured heart that God is on your side. So I want to challenge you today. Don't be mediocre. Don't be selfish. Seek the face of God. The time of testing will come, just like the time of testing came to every disciple of Christ. And be sure, whatever your choice is with God, it will find you out whether you really meant business with Him. The Lord will open your heart to this truth and make you a blessing. Amen.